Yo, what is up guys? Poor Choices here, and I am here with a tech video today. If you are trying to update to the Microsoft Extended Security Update program, but you are not seeing the option to do so, this video will tell you what you need to do to ensure you get the updates. I myself was struggling with this, so I will give you the fix that worked for me. And I will also share some other fixes and things that could also have an impact. A little background before we start. Windows 10 was first released in July of 2015. This operating system has been around for nearly 10 years, and the end of life date is on October 14, 2025. The reason for the software going end of life is to focus on newer software and technology which is completely normal for all companies to do, not just for software, but also technology such as cell phones, printers, and many other forms of technology. Now, it is important to note that if your computer has Windows 10 and it goes end of life, this does not prevent you from using your computer. It just prevents critical software updates from occurring. Also as well, various software may end its support for your computer. Uh, the TurboTax desktop app, for example, will not be supported after Windows 10 goes end of life. Microsoft has given the announcement early on, giving plenty of time for users to upgrade their systems. However, there are still a bunch of users on Windows 10, uh, likely due to hardware shortages and also being able to financially afford a new computer. So Microsoft's solution to this was to implement an extended security updates program to continue to provide updates to the user systems. But at the same time, this gives users more time to upgrade than the timeline that was given. Now, before we get to the fixes, here are a few important things to note. Uh, first things first, this tutorial will be focused on the consumer ESU program. Uh, for those looking to be a part of the ESU program at their business, I recommend contacting your system administrator. Um, and second of all, the extended security updates program will last a few years. However, with software and hardware and technology ending its support for Windows 10 and likely more to end support after the end of life date, I only recommend the ESU program for those who need more time to upgrade. Whether you find yourself unable to get a new computer due to a tech shortage, or if you cannot afford a new a computer financially, the ESU program only covers critical Windows updates. So if a software or a technology goes end of life, it uh, just duly notes that it is not covered on the extended security updates program. And then third of all, this program is specifically designed for those who are running Windows 10 and cannot run Windows 11. If your computer is on Windows 10 and is able to run Windows 11, you may not have the option to enroll in the ESU program, and therefore your only choice would be to upgrade to Windows 11. To check and see if your computer is eligible, on the Start menu, type in PC Health Check. So we'll type in PC Health Check here. And then, assuming you have the app, it'll show up here, it'll be called PC Health Check. We click on that, and it'll start the PC Health Check. If you do not have the PC Health Check, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to this website. If you do not have the PC Health Check, then what you will want to do is you will want to go to this website and download it using the download link provided. I will have the link in the description, but once you click on this link to download, it will save to your desktop. Um, so save it to your desktop, you'll run the download, and it'll download the PC Health Check app. So after you do that, you will see what I see here, the PC Health Check app. So once you run the PC Health Check app, you will have the option to check to see if your computer can run Windows 11. So in my case, my computer cannot run Windows 11 because I don't have TPM 2.0. Uh, my processor in general is not eligible um, for uh, Windows 11. You may see the same result. You may 
likely see a different result. It just really depends. You may see the same thing where I, where you can't run Windows 11. You may see that you can run Windows 11. But either way, if you do see that you meet the eligibility requirements for Windows 11, I would highly recommend doing the update. I would only recommend the ESU for those who cannot run Windows 11. All right, now let's get on to the fixes. The first solution is to check to see if you already have the option to enroll in the ESU. On the search bar on the start menu, type in settings. So we'll go to settings and now oh, it appears there. So we'll go to settings. Oh, it appears on my other screen. Let me drag it over. Here we go. All right, so here's settings. I'll make it a bigger screen for you guys here. Settings, and then once you go to settings, you will see an option called update and security. You will want to click on that. And so this is the page that you will be able to check for updates. And then on this screen as well, you'll be able to see the option to enroll in the extended security updates program. It would be below the, if you see the option, it would be below the check for updates. Uh, now, this is the easiest fix for those who have the option, but if you guys do not see it, definitely no need to fear. Um, there are some more things to try. All right, the next solution you'll need to try is to ensure that you meet the prerequisites for the ESU program. So I'm just going to pull up the prerequisites here. Um, so here's the, here's the um, extended security updates prerequisites page. I will have this link in the description for you guys as well. Um, so the first prerequisite is that your device must be running Windows 10 version 22H2, Home, Professional, Pro Education, or, or Workstation Edition. The second prerequisite is that the devices must have the latest update installed. So essentially to check that, if we go back into the update screen here, so it, it, in case you do not know how to do it, start menu, go into settings, you go into settings and then there's then once the window pops up there's you'll go into the option that says update and security so once you get to update and security if you already have the screen open what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into where it says update history view update history so once you view your update history this is going to see, you're going to see all the updates that you have installed now, in order to be able to enroll in the ESU program, you must have the latest August updates on your computer. So in this case, in other words, to simplify it, you must have KB5063709 and you must have KB5066188. So those two August updates you must have for the ESU program to work. I think it's specifically more KB5063709. That's what they're looking for. So if you're unable to see KB5066188 and you just see the option for KB5063709, um, that's the option that they're looking for. It's basically essentially the first August update. So if you see the first August update, that's what they're looking for. If you do not see this option on here, essentially it'd be... 2025 and then dash 08 it'll show the update and it'll show what version it is if you do not see that option um first things first you'll want to make sure you have uh windows 10 22h2 because that's what you'll need for dsu but um second thing is you'll want to manually check for updates so what you want to do is you want to go back to the updates page there's a arrow at the top left here we'll go back there and then, yeah, we'll want to manually check for updates. So we'll go ahead and check for updates right now. We'll manually check them. And then once you manually check for updates, it should automatically install the update. Oh, I see I have an update here I'm installing. But yeah, once you manually check for updates, it should install those August updates to your, um, to your computer. And once those updates install, you should be eligible for the ESU program. And now the third prerequisite is that the Microsoft account used to sign into the device must be an administrator account. Now this part is a little confusing. However, let me elaborate on this. The thing that most people ask is yes. And the answer to this that most people ask is yes, you can be on a local account. And in addition to that, 
if you use the Microsoft Office desktop apps, Microsoft Teams, if you play games on the Xbox app on your computer, or if you use a Microsoft application on your computer that you have a Microsoft login for, um, you do not need to take any additional steps. You're basically all good to go if you've done that. Signed in with Microsoft on any like desktop application on your computer. But if you have not used a Microsoft account on your computer at all, then essentially when you go to enroll in the ESU, it'll just prompt you to sign into a Microsoft account before the enrollment starts. Um, other than so, other than the local account needing to be an admin, um, your your login for your computer does not need to be a Microsoft account, but you will need a Microsoft account to enroll. So again, this is the part that Microsoft confuses you on, but you can sign in, you can enroll, but you can enroll to the ESU program with a local account, and then just sign into the ESU program with a Microsoft account. All right, so the next step will be to restart your computer. And I know what you're thinking. Poor choices. I have already restarted my computer. Well, I recommend trying it again if you haven't done so already. Sometimes after so many restarts, the option to enroll on the ESU will appear or may appear. It may not appear, but it may appear. It's worth a try. The next step is a little on the technical side. However, this is how I fixed the issue I was facing. First things first, close out of the updates pane if you haven't already, so I'll close it out here. And then now what you'll need to do is on the search bar on the start menu, type in PowerShell. PowerShell, I forget that power director on here. That's my video editor. Yeah, you want to type in PowerShell and then you'll want to right click on Windows PowerShell and run it as administrator. And then you could, okay, so now also to note here, all right, so also to note here, you could also do this on command prompt and run that as administrator. However, in this tutorial, I will be using PowerShell. Uh, once you load up PowerShell, you should see where it says PSC Windows System 32. Uh, so basically, as long as it shows Windows slash System 32, you are good to go. You you may see another letter besides C right here. You can see D, you can see X, you can see J. Um, basically, as long as it shows Windows System 32, you are good to go. If it shows something completely different other than Windows System 32, then this means that you are not running PowerShell as administrator and that you'll need to basically close out the PowerShell and reopen it as administrator. If that is, it's not showing System32 on here. Um, okay, so once you are running PowerShell as administrator, copy and paste the following command. Uh, and essentially the copy and paste, you want to copy the text I have in the description for this particular step. And then you'll want to right click on the empty space in PowerShell um, to paste. So basically I copy the text, copy the text already, and I'm just going to paste it in here. There we go. And then now what you'll want to do is you'll want to press enter. However, since I have already done this, I'm not going to do it again. But since I've already done this, um, I'll just show you what it, what it will look like here when running it for the first time. All right, so this is what it will look like. This is what you will see. Um, you will see where it says ESU eligibility and ESU eligibility results. Um, and then next to that, you'll have a, a number value. You'll have some zeros in there. If it shows zero, then that means it hasn't been ran yet. It, basically, the feature is not present. Um, if you see the number one on the first result, ESU eligibility, then that means you are not eligible for the ESU. Um, I will have more detail. I'm not going to go over these numbers fully in this video. However, I will have more details on what the number values mean and what I will have more details in the description on what the number values mean for those who want to learn more about the values. So essentially, before you enroll in the ESU, Windows does an eligibility check. Sometimes these eligibility checks take a while to run, or they don't run at all. So running this command on so by running this command on PowerShell, it forces an eligibility check on the ESU. 
And depending on if you are eligible or not, this is what will bring up the ESU enroll prompt. And so after running this command, go into your settings and then go on to the update and security page and then see if you are able to enroll in the ESU. This fix should work. I'd, I'd say it would work like 90% of the time. This is what fixed it for me. And I would assume that it should work maybe the majority of the time. If the previous fix did not work for you, then the next step would be to ensure that the connected user experiences service is enabled. Now, it may not be as easy as just going in and, and, and enabling the service, and you may have to go into PowerShell and type in some commands. This is something that I would consider uh, pretty advanced for someone who is not so technical. So therefore, I am not going to cover too much in this video. However, if you wish to try this fix, I will have the commands in the description for those who want to try it. Additionally, you could also pause the video and follow the steps in here if you, will, if you wish to try this on your own as well. All right, so last but not least, if you still do not see the option to enroll for uh, the ESU, uh, double check to ensure you have all the latest Microsoft updates. Also double check to ensure you're running uh, Windows 10 uh, version 22H2. Um, if you do not have this, you, you may not be eligible for the ESU. Um, now one way to check uh, to see if you're eligible or not is by typing Winber in the start menu. So we'll do this really quick here, Winber. So once you type in Winver, it'll display the version you have. If it says version 22H2, um, then you are eligible for the ESU. If it doesn't say 22H2, then you are not eligible for the ESU. Um, so that is one thing to uh, keep in mind about. Um, the other thing I would recommend doing is to make sure that you have the latest Microsoft Store updates. Uh, checking for these updates ensures that you have the latest updates installed for Microsoft Windows apps, and it may also help with bringing the option to enroll onto the ESU program just by doing those updates. So to do that, we will want to search for Microsoft Store in the Start menu. So we'll do that. Microsoft Store, we'll search for that. And then once you search for Microsoft Store, there will be a Downloads tab on the lower left. Click on that. Once you do that, it'll display all of your updates and downloads. What you'll want to do is on the upper right hand corner, you want to click on where it says check for updates. So after you check for updates, hopefully this fixes it. I hope this helped you guys out and has restored the functionality of being able to enroll onto the Microsoft extended security updates for Windows 10. I have covered several possible fixes in this video, ranging from stuff that is really easy to stuff that is a little bit more technical. If this has helped you out, please leave a like. That would be greatly appreciated. It would also be great if you subscribed and hit that notification bell to receive updates on when I upload another video. Also, for those who have made it this far into the video, what technology how-to videos should I do? I can make a video on how to fix something or I can do something more general, such as how to download something. Let me know what you guys would like to see down in the comments below. So yeah guys, poor choice is signing out. Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, then make sure you hit that thumbs up. Also, don't forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. As always, see you in the next video. Peace.